Hey, welcome to my channel. I'm Ed Padgett, and today we're doing a deep dive into a topic that might just change your life, better mobility. Now, you might be wondering, why do you need better mobility? But trust me, it's all about improving the quality and the longevity of your life. Stick around as I share the four best bodyweight exercises for better mobility. So let's get started. I'm going to start with something that's going to get your attention. A while back, a group of researchers in Brazil asked people over the age of 50 and uh, under the age of 80 to do this test. What they wanted to do was see if they can get down to the ground and back up again without using their hands. And so they asked people to do this thing called the sit-rise test. It's like this. You go down by crossing your legs, go all the way down to the ground. That shows you've got control in your hips, mobility in your hips and strength in your knees and ankles. Then you simply come back up like this. Now, it's not an easy movement, and a lot of people struggle with it. So what they said was, if we start everyone with having 10 points, and you lose a point for every time you put a hand down, or you wobble, or a knee goes down, or you have to sort of take a different route to get there. The people who used seven points up, i.e. they put seven things down, were more likely to die in a six-year follow-up period than the people who didn't. And they attributed that to the strength and mobility of the hip joints. So that is why it's important to get the mobility uh, as best it can be as you age, because it's going to help you live longer. Uh, well, let's start with the primal squat. The primal squat is simply one of these Positions that we should all be able to do as humans. We should all be able to get down in a squat position, put our hands on the ground, and work. Uh, if we're going to work or, or play or whatever it is we're doing. But in, in societies that don't use chairs as, as much as the Western society, this is a pretty standard position to get into to be able to do some work. However, it's not easy for everyone to do. We might find we fall backwards like this. And if we do, there's a way to counteract that. You've got to lift your heels up a little bit. So I like to use something simple like this, just a little wedge, and you can put that underneath your heels, and then from here, you can feel a lot more confident going down into the squat, and you can see even my back's a little bit straighter. Over time, you can actually wiggle your hips uh, backwards or your feet forwards on this thing, and have less of a lift, and challenge your end of range mobility here. Now for some of you, that might not be even possible, and I understand that. So what you can do is actually hold on to something in front of you. As you hold on to that thing in front of you, you can lower yourself down to whatever your range of motion is. When you're there, hold for about three to five seconds, and then use your leg muscles and your arms to come back up. And if you do that for sets and reps of about 10 repetitions and three times through, you'll soon see a change in your ankle, knee, and hip flexibility because you're helping yourself get down there with your hands holding onto something. Now, some of you might be saying, well, it's not possible to get down to the ground because of the clothes you're wearing. And this is true. So something I like to suggest to people is to wear more flexible clothes. And this allows you to do all sorts of things, but you might not wanna just be doing that. You can actually just simply hang out whilst you're in a squat position. So let's say you want to pet the dogs, drink some tea, check your social media, all that kind of stuff. You can get down to the squat position to add flexibility into your hips, knees, and ankles and gain that range of motion without really trying that hard. The second exercise I want to show you is a dead hang because shoulder mobility is something that tends to go as we get older. I'm amazed with the amount of my clients who simply cannot put their hand up over their head. It's not that they necessarily have a problem, it's just that they don't use their shoulders up over their heads or put their hands over their heads. And over time, they tend to lose that movement. You know, the old adage of, if you don't use it, you lose it. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're going to take, you can take a bar, a top of a door, uh, a door frame, something like that. I happen to have some rings. And you can put your uh, hands into the rings and then lower yourself down, getting your hands up over your head. Now, I haven't even got my full body weight on this, right? You can see I'm in that deep squat, working on my foot, ankle, uh, and knee uh, flexibility as well. But to add more body weight, in this case, I would simply put my legs out in front, and now I'm sort of really hanging here. 
What we want to avoid is holding yourself up, okay? It's not a hang like this, that's an arm exercise. This is a shoulder stretch. So you get nice and, uh, nice and comfortable, you can wiggle yourself around a little bit, find you get more stretching in aspects of your rotator cuff when you do this. And you can hold for as, uh, as long as you want, essentially. And when I used to have a functional movement clinic, what we used to do there was challenge our staff to do seven minutes of hanging a day, not all in one go, obviously. Uh, we used to let them build up to that one, in one minute intervals. But over a month, the changes that happen in your hands, forehand, forearms, elbows, and shoulders is amazing because your body weight and being able to hold your body weight is a really crucial factor in health and longevity. The third area I want to look at is your hips. Now, hips are a huge component of overall flexibility in the body because they're the largest joint in the body. The hamstrings in particular get very, very tight and people can't bend forward. They end up using their back a little bit more, which can cause back problems. And they can get weak through what we call the posterior chain here. So a great way to stretch this is to step backwards and bend your back knee. So my left leg, the one closest to you here, is bent, bent backwards. And as I do this, I hinge at the hips, keeping my lower back nice and straight, and I get a nice stretch into my uh, hamstring on my right side. So if I do that on the other side, it looks like this. I step backwards with my right leg, bend my right leg, straighten my right knee, sorry, my left knee, and get a nice stretch through here. If I don't feel anything, I can lift the toes up to get a stretch. Now, I can make that a little bit more dynamic. I can step back in different directions. So I can step back behind me, I can step back way behind me, and that gets a different part of the hamstring muscle group. And I can step back all the way out here and still get different parts of the hamstring group. Now, you may have seen people doing what they call the Cossack squat, which is where they go really wide. And they're not necessarily stepping back, but they're still getting a stretch into that hamstring and groin section through here. And this is a, a very advanced exercise, but also that's fantastic for hip flexibility. But the way to start would be stepping backwards, hinging at the hips, nice straight back, stepping back to where you came from. Varying the direction of where that foot goes and try three, uh, three sets of about 10 repetitions. Now the fourth exercise can be done in conjunction with the exercise we just did, which is fantastic because if you're anything like me, you wanna save time. So we're gonna open up the front of the hips now and these commonly get tight in activities of daily living like sitting and driving, but we're going to pretend we just did the last exercise. So we're back here, we're stretching the back of this leg. Now if I was to step forward, I would actually open up the front of my hip. Okay, so I can step backwards, hamstring, step forward, hip. And so it becomes a pivot exercise, is what we call it. We call it a pivot stretch. And so here I can say, well, I also want to work on my shoulders still. So I can take my hands towards the ceiling and drive them up as far as I can, stretching through my upper back and my chest. And then come down and take my hands all the way down or even behind me and up towards the ceiling, stretching the front part of my shoulder. So up here, stretching the arms over the head and back here, hamstrings and shoulders. So it becomes a really nice combination type exercise that can add mobility to the front of the hip, the back of the hip, and the shoulders all at the same time. And there you have it folks, four bodyweight exercises to transform your mobility. I really hope you found them useful. Don't forget this, to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend who you think can benefit from this content as well. Hey, look, if you already liked the last one, that pivot stretch, I want you to check out the link in the description below where I show you how you can do that in multiple directions to get every area of your hip stretched out and strengthened at the same time. Also, you may know that I help people recover from illness and injury using a combination of specific exercises and lifestyle medicine, but I have a special focus on scoliosis. If you have scoliosis or back pain and you want to talk to me, I invite you to book a free call and I'll see if I can help. Just follow the link in the description below or in the first pinned comment and I'll be happy to see what I can do. So stay tuned for my next video, which will be up soon.